So what is there our response to that announcement of redemption, that announcement of the kingdom that was part and parcel with the gospel? It's an aspect that salvation is coming and salvation. Another way to put that is deliverance, deliverance from judgment and wrath from God, but also deliverance from the brokenness and the oppressive things that happen in this world. That that's ultimately it's an already but not yet fully realized reality. And so as we await that, we await, but also praying your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that is a prayer that we're not just called to ask God pietistically up in the sky, but it's a prayer that we're also supposed to pray with our feet. We're also supposed to pray as we proclaim the gospel in every facet of humanity, not just with our lips, but as we demonstrate it with our lives. That that is the fullness of what we're called to do to bring about shalom, you know, as much as we can. And in doing so, it actually reflects the glory of God and causes people to say, what must I do to be saved? It causes people to experience and go, why is that group of people? This is what we saw in Acts in the early church. People saw the disciples sharing amongst one another, people from diverse groups, people from economic statuses that it said no one had need. And that picture is why people were drawn to the gospel. When we are about that race and justice, we can confront the racial history of our past, the oppression of our past, and, and, and look forward to a way of righting those wrongs, confessing sin that needs to be confessed, and presenting a new future and reality whereby we say this is all part of the gospel plan of restoration of relationships and us back to God. And when we proclaim that, that causes people to want again say, what must I do to be saved?